In this tutorial, we'll talk about importing audio into Pro Tools. There's a few different ways to do this, and each has its pros and cons, and we'll just step through them, and I, I personally have a preference as to one of the ways. So let's get started. We can do the old-fashioned way, which is to choose File, Import, Audio. And this particular method is really good if you've got audio on CD that you need to bring into your session. And this presents us with a dialog that lets us search our computer, find the audio file, and then import it. So I've already got a loops folder brought up, so and I've got a few drum loops in this folder. Click on the file, and it immediately puts it into this region Q on the left. Now these regions on the left will only be, um, well we should consider them as regions to be considered to be imported, but not necessarily that will be imported. So let me show you the difference. If I choose done right now, well, Pro Tools did not import the audio. So let's get the import dialog again, shift apple i. I choose the region I want to import. This time, I need to choose convert to put it into this little box here. Regions to import indicates actual regions to be brought into the file. This particular dialog lets us preview the regions by pressing the play button. And I'll import this by choosing convert. And I can change a sample rate. You know, this is really good if you're working with DV sample rate 48K or you're working with 96K. But you do want to be very careful when you're working with a higher sample rate but you import lower sample rate audio because you can really get some terrible results with that. When you're done, just choose done. Now we're prompted for a place to save this. We'll save it in our audio files folder in our session and Pro Tools will default to that all the time. And choose. Now we're asked where do we want to import it to the actual session in the form of a track or to the regions list that's here in the right. Uh, let's go ahead and create a new track. We can choose to place it somewhere. So what's really great is if you're working with film, you can um, spot the audio to an exact place. You can choose to push it into a selection if you already have a selected area. But we're just going to put it right at the session start. So here we see a stereo track created, and let's play it to hear it. Okay, that sounds great. Uh, the only thing is that if we change the tempo of our project, so let's make the tempo 82, and let's press play again. You'll notice that Pro Tools didn't change the tempo of the audio file, this is for a few different reasons. One is because this file was a Sound Designer 2 file, and unlike a Rex file, um, that file does not accommodate naturally for the change of tempo in a project, whereas a Rex file does. And also, using the dialog brought up by Shift Apple I will not give you the option to preview the file at the uh, tempo of your session. So let's figure out how to do that. So I'll just delete this particular region, and let's look at another way to import audio. We'll go to Window, and choose Workspace. This brings up a browser that looks similar to the Finder in uh, Mac, but it's DigiDesign's version, so it's got a few extra options at the top. I'll look for my loop folder. Uh, here it is, and drum loops is in the Motu loops, drums, and right now I'm looking at 59A. Oh, I must have chose the wrong folder, but that's okay. So here I've got all these loops, and the benefit of this method for importing is that I can choose a file and then click the speaker icon to hear it preview. I can also press the space bar. Now, this metronome icon that's highlighted indicates that elastic time is being applied to the file. And what that means 
is that Pro Tools will manipulate the file to make it fit within your current um, tempo. So I'm at 82 right now, but let's go ahead and, and speed it up to 144. Now let's preview it. So this is a really nice way to preview audio uh, and get a feel for the groove at different tempos. Um, whereas the other method just imports the audio and then later we have to actually do um, a good amount of manual adjustment to figure out, well, is it going to groove? Is it, is it not going to groove? So to import from this window, we just drag into the edit window. We can drag into the tracks portion to create a new track or drag into the regions pane to create a new region without creating a new track. I like to actually drag it into the tracks pane and a new region is already created. And as well, a new track is created. We'll take a listen. And while we won't talk about elastic time at length right now, it's important to note that regions that have elastic time applied to them will have this small metronome looking icon at the top right of the region. And that's important because it represents a manipulation of the original audio file. Um, so if you wanted the actual audio file source, you'd go to the regions pane and you'd look for the audio file. So this is 100D, but you'd look for the audio file region that didn't have the metronome icon or the uh, warp icon. And I could click this one, for instance, drag it out. And here I'm given the original unedited or an unaltered audio file, and it's much slower. So what are the benefits and downsides to both? Well, the first method, which is Shift Apple I, this lets us browse the hard drive, select the audio, import it, and preview it. But the real benefit here is that it forces us to place the imported audio into our audio files folder in our session folder, which is really important when you're going to transfer your session from one computer to another, because if your audio files aren't all accounted for, you can all of a sudden open up your file, let's say at a mastering studio or a recording studio, and you're missing files. So that's the benefit of, of method one. The benefit of the Digi Browser is that here you're given a really attractive looking finder where you can find the files and browse really quickly for some loops. So here I've got a folder on my hard drive called loops. I'm given waveform previews of each of the loops. I'm given duration, kind, in a much sleek uh, or a more sleek kind of aesthetic way. I can preview them really easy by clicking the name. And as well, I can get a preview of what they would sound like at the session tempo. Now the downside is these regions or audio files won't necessarily be brought into our audio files folder in our session. Instead, Pro Tools will look for them in the original location. So that's fine if you're working on your own computer and you don't take your session anywhere. But if you take your session again to a recording studio or a mastering house, you've got to make sure that you've copied those regions over with your um, Pro Tools session and also in the same um, dependency relationship. So for instance, these loops are in the MCMT admin folder, applications folder, uh, Rex loop folder, drums folder, etc. So Pro Tools looks for that relationship. So it might mean that you've got to maybe copy them out of this loops folder and put them into your session folder in order for there to be better file continuity later.